हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज अरिंदम मुखोपाध्याय एंड वेलकम टू ऑर्थो इम्प्लांट्स फॉर लाइफ टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट डिस्टल टीबिया फ्रैक्चर फिक्सेशन प्रोसीजर विद डिस्टल टीबिया एंटेरोलैटरल लॉकिंग प्लेट सो लेट्स स्टार्ट द वीडियो Okay friends first let us understand the distal tibia fracture as you can see in this diagram in the lower leg there are two long bones the larger of the two bones is known as the tibia or the shin bone distal tibia fracture happens in the lower part of tibia This is a distal tibia anterolateral locking plate. This plate is used to fix a fracture from the anterior and lateral side. That is why it is called an anterolateral plate. In order to fix this plate, first we have to provide an incision in the fracture site. After the surgeon performs the incision, periosteum elevator is used to lift and separate the periosteum from the bone. After this step, a mepo elevator or a tunneler is required. that procedure is called mepo mepo stands for minimally invasive plate osteosynthesis this is inserted in the fracture site for tunneling after this we use a 3.5 mm locking sleeve and attach it in the distal part of the plate after this process the plate is placed on the fracture site then we attach k wire in this small hole to provide the plate stability and reduce any further movement of the plate from the fracture site this also ensures reduction to the plate one in the distal part and one in this region of the shaft two k wires are used to keep the plate stable here after we can proceed to the fixation of the screw this is the shaft region of the plate and this is the distal head of the plate this is also known as a cancellous part of the plate so we use a cancellous screw in the cancellous part and we use a cortical screw in the shaft region so first we will be fixing the shaft region of the plate with the bone to place a non locking screw in the shaft region we will use a 3.2 mm drill bit and drill through the non locking hole After this we will be using a 4.5 mm bone tap in order to tap and to create a smoother entry of the screw. After this we use a depth gauge in order to measure the length of the screw that is needed to be fixed. So we are taking 30 mm length in consideration. After this with the help of a 4.5 mm screw driver we fix a 4.5 mm non locking cortical screw. in this region once this screw is fixed we will move forward to fix the distal head of the plate in order to fix a 3.5 mm cancellous screw we will use a 2.8 mm drill bit and drill through this drill sleeve for cancellous screws you don't need to do any tapping Again we use a depth gauge in order to measure the length of the screw that we need to fix in this hole. Here we are taking in consideration the length as 35 mm. And then we take a 3.5 mm locking screw which is 35 mm in length and with the help of a 3.5 mm screw driver we will fix this screw. to fix other screws in the distal end of this plate we will repeat the same process of fixing up the drill sleeve drilling through it and then fixing the screws if you remember as discussed earlier the distal part is uh, basically cancellous so we fix this with a locking cancellous screw
After fixing the distal head of the plate with two screws, we again go back to the shaft region of the plate as both end of the plate needs to be stable equally. In order to give a locking screw in the shaft region of the plate, we will attach a 4.9 mm locking sleeve in the, lock, in the locking hole of the shaft region. After fixing this, we have to drill through the sleeve with a 4.3 mm drill bit. We do not require to tap for a locking screw as explained earlier. After this we remove the locking sleeve and then use a depth gauge to measure the length of the screw that is needed to be fixed. Let's take in consideration that the length is 28mm in this case. So we take a 4.9mm cortical screw which is off which is 28mm in length. All the screws are attached as per the surgeon's instructions. After this, according to the surgeon's instruction, we will keep on attaching screws in each of the holes of this plate. There will be a final check for the locking screws that were fixed in this plate. With the help of a torque limiting screwdriver, we will check the locking screws. We will tighten it as long till it makes a click sound. This click sounds means that this locking screw is fully locked with the plate and the bone. So that is all for a distal tibia anterolateral locking plate. If you have enjoyed the video, like it, share it. If you are new to our channel, subscribe it. Hit the bell icon to get the notifications for our upcoming videos. If you have any queries, comment below and we will surely reply back. If you want to know more about career prospects in orthopedic implant industry and wish to start a career in orthopedic implant industry, please click the link below in the description box and DM us to know more. Thank you and see you in our next video.